Right, I quickly want to cover uh, the bias of the King James Bible and plus all the false interpretations and translations, different versions, to change the Word of God, to discredit and undermine the Gospel and the Word. Uh, this website is um, Bible, King James Bible or Bible search engine and uh, it's by the Sa Salem Web Network Salem <laughs> Salem Witch Trials uh, that was my f initial thoughts but I just want to show how how a bias it is it's on the King James uh, Bible search version so it's on Bible versions I've selected King James and I've put in before Abraham was I am so I press find and it's brought me up the NIV version, not the King James version. It does that every time when I use it and I specifically choose in the Bible box, Bible versions, and then I then I'll go down and select there's all the different corruptions. Some are some are from the uh, original text but some are um, perverse from the Catholic texts. Uh, you can investigate which text is which. And there's no King James on here, not that I can see. So uh, let's find the King James version. So it's all to discredit and hide the uh, King James version. The King James version's not on there. Uh, There we go, there it is. And it will take me to the page I was at where where we started and, and then it takes me to let's try it again. Um See if it goes to the NIV version again. No, it's taken me to the King James version this time. But the first time, on the same search page, it takes me to the NIV, which disrupts when when I'm searching for scriptures. Um, if I go to well, compare, compare translations, and if I put in uh, butter and honey. which I've already tried before no Bible passage found so if I go back to which is which is false uh, right here's a different page it's taking me to a different page now these are all the different uh, no it's the same page beg your pardon so I've gone to the King Chain search engine page and it should come up Isaiah 7 Butter and Honey So it does exist So um, When I am searching There's references to the Lord Butter and Honey shall he eat That he may know to refuse evil and choose good If we just do a compare of all the other versions And you'll see all the this is just one one verse. You'll see how each Bible will give a different meaning. Some are very similar, some are some are not. Um, ESV, he shall he shall eat curds and honey. You might think that's the same thing, but it's not the same words. Um, many of the uh, modern versions which uh, root from the corrupted texts that are owned by the Vatican and that's where all the modern translations come from, all the expert opinion on what, what the Bible should actually say which is all linked into the Illuminati and Freemasonry to undermine the Bible and the Gospel message. 
and the uh, final authority of the Word of God because if it's not in one version it, it disrupts and uh, blurs the truth of what the actual Word of God is and the official Word of God um, in, in Psalm 12 it says the Lord will um, purify the Word seven times now the original King James translation and then it's lawful uh, the way it was lawfully uh, um, translated took seven years so it's a fulfilling of uh, the, the scriptures um, so there's many uh, changes and the changes can at times give different meanings to the context and the uh, the most important ones are the deity of Jesus Christ I'm not going to um, go through all of them, I just want to show you. Uh, I just want to show the differences in meaning um, and I'll go to um, a chosen verse uh, that I noticed the other day that had different meanings. Uh, Jeremiah uh, verse what, uh, chapter 1, 6 to 7, uh, 5 to 7. Right, it's taken me to the uh, right one, King James Version. Before I formed in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I commanded thee, that thou shalt speak. So if we can compare with other versions, um, this is comparing verse 5, I'll do it on verse 6. It won't let me compare all three verses only one at a time, so I'll compare verse 6 and it, there's uh, completely different translations of the same thing from the authorised version of the King James that's very similar, that's almost identical that's almost identical, now that's changed to I'm a youth so there's a difference in age. Was Jeremiah a child at the time the Lord spoke to him, or was he a youth? It's been, it's been intellectually translated rather than by the power of the Holy Ghost, like the original, the original um, translation of the faithful King James was translated by the power of God, because God ordained it, and he done it lawfully, as well as through inspiration, through the people who were qualified and capable and uh, translated the original from the original manuscripts, uh, the, the Greek and the Hebrew. And now that's Jewish version. That's the same. That's the same. That's not quite the same. That's completely changed. I'm only a boy. I am too young. Sovereign Lord. I answered Sovereign Lord. I don't, I, I don't know how to speak, I am too young, which has completely changed the meaning. I answered, Sovereign Lord, I don't know how to speak, I'm too young again. I'm only a youth, not a child. Alas, it's using Jehovah, Lord Jehovah. Might have the same meaning, but it's not the same wording. And it changes child to youth. This is just one example, the Wycliffe. The word English Bible, Yahweh. I don't know why it's using the name Yahweh or Yahweh. Behold, I am a child. I am a child. I am a child. I am a youth. Uh, that's one. That's the same because it's with the apocrypha. For I am a child. I'm a child. I'm a child. I'm only a boy. I'm only a boy, I'm too young, I'm a youth, I'm too young, 
So there's lots of different versions of the same thing. Let's try uh, again quickly. I could use um, better examples. Now in other translations a whole chapters have been removed uh, in the book of Matthew. The meaning of the Lord's um, deity and God, uh, his authority and being a member of the Godhead is uh, changed. So uh, it twists the scriptures, it, it distorts the word of God. So we have all these different um, uh, phrases of the same meaning. Uh, there's no mention of sanctification that the Lord sanctified. Let's get the original translation. That gives sanctified. Right. Before I formed in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. So that's port important. Sanctified. Uh, not many versions, that's consecrate. Um, now you could argue that may, may mean the same thing, but it could be um, changed to mean, interpreted to mean something else. The point is it, it distorts and gives you uh, many different versions of the same thing. Now there can't be, um, it can't be intellectualized, it cannot be um, interpreted to mean one thing in one Bible and another thing in another Bible. So it, the, the, all these efforts are simply to undermine the authority and the confuse the uh, people who hold to these appointed you as a prophet. There's no, there's no mention of sanctification in the NIV. There is in the uh, New King James Version, but the New King James Version doesn't come from the same text there's the um, old King James, the authorised King James. So we've got all these um, different meanings to the same original, original scriptures. And at one time, the only the only Bibles in existence were the ones preceding the King James, and the King James that was uh, commonly used throughout the world. Um, I can't say the Catholics use that, but. Um, when, when the Bible become popular and, and people had access to it, it was um, predominantly the King James Version, which is the authorised Word of God. Um, we've looked at that verse. Let's look at verse 7 quickly, just, just to show the differences. So I just wanted to share all these uh, different uh, versions and um, the different translations cha slightly changing the meaning. Uh, this is not the greatest example, this is just one I, I found that I wanted to show that I could recall. And, and the biasness of this uh, search engine, how it always directs to the NIV translation. It uses the NIV as its uh, final authority, and um, the people who um, put verses up and, and give Bible teachings are gen generally use the NIV version, and they are uh, ecumenical. They're associated to Roman Catholicism under the uh, churches together, the interfaith. Let's all let's all get along with Muslims and. Uh, Hindu and let's not uh, confute and contend for the word of God. So it undermines the power and waters down the Christian, the person who holds to uh, a version of, other than the original. And if you investigate this, people have done some research and thorough, thoroughly pointed out which which first versions have been, which verses have been omitted, and which words have been changed comparing it with an original King James Bible uh, faithful translation. So I just wanted to uh, share that and I'm going to give some thoughts on uh, how the people in power, how the people who purchase up uh, publishing rights and things like that change things and how the world's dominated by 
certain groups of people like I wonder who these are Salem web network and then a lot of these translations are from um, um, I can't remember the name of the the publishers but they publish a lot of the satanic bibles and they they've um, commissioned all the and, and they own the copyright for all these bibles or most of these other modern versions and they are not uh, copyright free they are the copyrights of are owned by a private body who aren't Christian. Uh, the King James Bible was given freely to the common people and anybody could copy it. Um, you can't change it but you can copy it because it's copyright free in that sense that you can have your own faithful version of the original uh, text and that was um, lawfully appointed by King James to be re read in the uh, public worship houses to have a version of the Bible that was uh, faithfully and lawfully translated but there's so much opposition against it and it's crept into this um, this bias body of people who provide this uh, search engine and they're always ask oh, after your money uh, give us your money, give us your money, give us your money and then it's all oh, the Christ is an afterthought, the gospel is an afterthought because it's, it's look after your money to to uh, oil the gears and I know that people need money but if you're going to um, serve the word of God you know free, you free, freely receive, it, re receive so you should freely give you shouldn't it's like the Lord chased out all the money changers in the temple is absolutely disgusted because it become a house of merchandise and that's what modern Christianity is it's um, it's a vehicle for merchandise justifying in the name oh well the ox is um, you know allowed to eat that what he treads out kind of thing the labourer is worthy of his hire well that, that's out of context uh, Paul the apostle worked for a living and he paid his way not to be a burden on people these people are always after your money so they can carry on making money and then they uh, the gospel and the word of God's an afterthought it's uh, used to justify what they are doing but what they are doing is making money on the back of it you can go uh, to um, other websites that are free and that are hosted freely by people who don't ask for your money it's just a blank page with a little box in you put your put your uh, verse in and it will search where it is in the scriptures so I'm going to close there for a the minute but I just wanted to highlight those points. Right, this chart which I downloaded, I don't know who originally wrote the chart, but it's a good demonstration of all the uh, corrupt versions. And you have the faithful root and all the different versions and the and the uh, through history, all, all the available texts and what the translations come from that original faithful the Gospels and how they were copied and recorded through different dispensations of time and then to the original King James Version AV which is standardised so you've got a standard version like a standard weight like you'd have to measure weights you'd have a standard ounce, a standard gram, a standard pound and you test your weights against the standard and then you've got all the uh, Alexandrian Alexandrius text the Vatican versions and all the uh, offshoots and the um, all the different uh, belief systems that come off these corrupt I think these are de depict gourds which are um, like a f uh, an imitate like wheats and tares you have wheat and then the tear looks identical but the tear is actually poison and these are like gourds which is a fruit that looks like a, an edible fruit perhaps figs something like that or it looks like an, uh, an original something but when you when you uh, eat the fruit it's poisonous so it's been likened in this analogy so I just wanted to uh, have that uh, diagram it, and it shows you all the different all, all the different versions the, the new King James version which is which is corrupt from 
Vaticanus, and you've got Wycliffe, but who are those other people? Horts, uh, Westcott and Hort, and all their, their translations, the Revised Standard Version, the NRSV, these are all corrupt Bibles, the NSA, the NSA, the NS, NASV, and you've got all the other English versions, um, so NIV version, uh, the Wycliffe version, revised version, and then you get all these multiple versions which fracture the image of the light, the gospel, and, the, and its, its uh, original source, its faithful source, compared to the corrupt, and I think that's a great uh, analogy to show and investigate people further. So if you're holding to any one of these versions, you're um, dishonouring the uh, Word of God. I'm going to read, um, just quickly read uh, Psalm 12. And I'm going to share, then after this, I'm going to share just some things that are changed in the dictionary, changing meanings of words. Uh, Psalm 12, help Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fall from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbour, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, with our tongue we will prevail, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? For the, oppressing, uh, the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I rise, saith the Lord, I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words, as fire, silver, tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Now, that scripture is so relevant today that every every passing day that scripture becomes brighter and brighter in my opinion and by by its own by the light in in the holy word the lord's word is pure and you get all these intellectual um professing lips you know it's this version it's that version all these intellectual opinions oh you need the greek and you need to you know, you need somebody who can read Greek to translate it, or Latin, or blah, blah, blah. They're all liars, they're all flattering lips, thinking that they can outthink God and the pure root. You know, that's even got seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The Lord will purify it seven times. So there's been seven faithful versions, get to the King James, and then, and then um, I haven't researched this, but I, I heard a quote saying that the the Bible, it took seven years to translate it, and that was um, done by lawful points, by having uh, groups of people um, translating the Bible to come up with a lawful, agreed version. So it was uh, lawfully um, done by gathering of evidence, and then that, all that evidence stacked up and agreed with itself. And, and then it was authorised and canonised and anything that didn't fit, like the Apocrypha or all these other books, uh, the other Gospels that crept, that were in, um, that were held to in history were rejected because they didn't match. There was uh, uh, different uh, versions and corruption in the text which come from this root, this evil tree. So they were dismissed as a lawful canon and what, what was left in the King James vi Version is the faithful standard that in my testimony and I'm pray, I prayed about it so if you're not sure you ask the Lord trust in the Lord and ask him to lead you and research all the available knowledge and, and research and research that's been consistently done through the ages showing the same thing the Texas Receptus from that original line yeah, and coming to the faithful standard of the King James authorised version of the Bible, which is the Word of God. All the others are corrupt. So I'm going to close there and move on to my next part. Right, I've moved on to just, I want to highlight some subtle changes in, in meanings to words. 
and these are very subtle and just just a few of missions and additions in um, different versions of different dictionaries um, so I've got three, I've got a Harper Collins dictionary somewhere which is different again but I'm going to share just a few changes as a, a Webster's, that's the New World Dictionary it's not the same as the old one but it's um, similar and an Oxford Dictionary and I'd just like to give some thoughts to people who've not considered this before how um, now the devil is the author of confusion and he's the prince of this world by default because people don't believe in Christ and the devil's biggest lie is he, he doesn't exist so anyone who's uh, not living for right, not living righteously is by default serving the devil whether they knowingly serve the devil to corrupt or whether they're just criminals or dishonest or disingenuine with disingenuine motives they are serving the devil and I've noticed uh, over time in my life um, growing up just pre the European Union and, and the uh, being a member of that body notice in how manufacturing changed how education was changed how so many different uh, shifts in the um, education paradigm so there's a generation before me who had one education which was more um, rooted in the Protestant Reformation and now there's this crossover into the uh, counter-reformation by the Catholic powers and the European powers taking effect cutting out that education from the future generation so it's like there's a famous quote you give us your children and we're we're shaped the future or there's other quotes that state I can't think of who quoted them originally but if those who control the present control the uh, control the past and, and therefore control the future because they can change history and they can rewrite history and um, I just want to highlight and point people in that kind of direction that these things are actually have subtly been taken place over generations implementing and taking the eye from future generations off of the, the main roots of our history, the important things of our history which they are trying to keep from people which is the really it roots into the um, the Protestant Reformation and the kicking out of popery and I think that's where I start with the um, definition of the of Jesuit in the dictionary so these are the main um, agitators now in the Oxford bearing in mind it's the world's most trusted dictionaries well that's um, up for debate because if you notice, I've noticed in if you look at all the um, I think it was the Quakers who founded Round Trees and uh, the chocolate uh, and they looked after their workers and um, they, they had quite moral standards um, and, and there was bids to buy them out and I think eventually they, they relented and they were taken up by other corporate bodies I think Kraft Foods was one of them were bidding for the uh, rights on on round trees and all these uh, established sweet companies in our country and uh, so they th these um, well established um, faithful manufacturers were brought up and so the the management changes hands, the shareholders change hands, but they keep all the all the name you see, so people that they don't tell the public that the takeover's taken place, and then they start mucking around with the name and the ingredients, and and possibly start adding a, a Spartan a Spartan into the uh, into the food chain, which is a a neurotoxin. It causes a uh, brain damage if you didn't know that, sweeteners and things like that. If you go to a local supermarket and you buy sweets, you look at the uh, bubble gums and you look at the chewing gums and you look at the, the pastels, the boiled sweets, 
They're all, they've taken out sugar because, you know, too much sugar is obviously bad for you. Refined sugar is much more bad for you and it's known to feed cancer cells. And um, so they've carefully replaced in all soft drinks, all uh, tonic water, all things like that. They started taking out the sugar, ginger beer, and you can't, it's, you have to hunt if you want a lemonade. If you want something like that without sugar in, uh, with sugar in, you'll be very hard pushed to find it on the shelf. Coca-Cola perhaps, if, but if you don't want to drink Coca-Cola, you want something a bit more healthy because um, that's got some horrible stuff in it, Coca-Cola. Um, I can't remember the acid they put in it, but, but it's um, an industrial waste. So all these uh, things are subtly changed without your being informed because the name stays the change, like Schweppes or whatever, whatever the manufacturer is, and they change the ingredients, but they don't inform you, and it's all on the back of it's more healthy for you. Well, it's, it's a lie because it's introducing this aspartame into the uh, food chain which causes um, brain uh, defects, it causes, uh, can, can contribute towards dementia, can contribute towards learning disabilities, uh, memory loss. So you, ha you have to be careful with these things. Now let's look at the definition of Jesuit in the uh, Oxford di Dictionary just to highlight some of these changes. Uh, a, a member of the Society of Jesus, a Roman Catholic order of priests founded by Saint Ignatius Loyola. There we go, not very... doesn't... so if you're, if you're um, a scholar, a young person grown up and you look up Jesuit, well, you think, oh there's nothing wrong with that, it's just a member of the Roman Catholic Church. Well, if you go back in uh, time to the old the old uh, dictionary and the uh, n when people were well aware of the knowledge of the, uh, the Spanish uh, the Spanish the Protestant Reformation and the Counter Reformation by the Jesuits, you're going to get a totally different um, interpretation of what what the meaning is. Uh, let's see if I can read it because the writing is so small. Uh, Jesuit, uh, one of the religious orders founded by Loyola under the title of the Society of Jesus. A crafty person and a opprobrious use of the word. Um, my eyesight's terrible. Uh, Peruvian bark, called because it, its medi, medi, medicinal properties were first made known by Jesuit missionaries. Jesuit, Jesu, Jesuitic, or Jesuitic, pertaining to Jesuitical. The Jesuits, designing, cunning, offensive. Uh, can't read that. Oh, offensive sense, manner, offensive manner. Jesuitical, uh, Jesuitically, uh, Jesuitism. Principle and practice of the Jesuits, cunning, deceit, uh, offensive, uh, offensive use of the word. So they, the Jesuits were well known in history for their cunningness and their um, changing of things and twisting things and infiltrating schools, education, politics, having an intelligence body to handle people around them, to influence people, to change their minds, to corrupt through their machinations, their cunning machinations. Well, let's look at some more words. Um, now, Holocaust. This is the original, an, an ancient definition. Um, my eyesight. Whole and... Oh. I can't read it. 
a burnt sacrifice, the whole of which was consumed by fire. So that's the definition of Holocaust in the Webster's. Um, in the Oxford, I think it's pretty much the same, but some dictionaries, and if you do, mainly on search engines, you'll get a strict definition. Holocaust, uh, destruction of killing on a mass scale, the mass murder of Jews under the German Nazi regime in World War II. Origin from the Greek holos, whole, kostos, burnt. So holocaust means burnt offering, but in certain dictionaries it, it doesn't cover the burnt bit, it just covers it's uh, to do with World War II. So again, that will take the student off the deeper significance of the practice, which goes back to Kabbalism and the apostate Israel burning, burning babies and burnt offerings in an apostate sense rather in the true sense in the Mosaic law. Um, this is the modern Webster's, which gives a bit more of a description. Um, Holocaust, whole, cost us burnt, so it gives a true definition. A great destruction of life, especially by fire. The Holocaust, the systematic killing of millions of European Jews by the Nazis before and during World War II. Um, so it gives a slightly different twist to the meaning so you associate holocaust with just the killing of the jews in in world war ii but it, it has a deeper significance of uh, consuming by fire as a sacrifice and offering so just the subtle changes of words can give new meanings here's an example i i got in i was with um, a relation of mine and um, having a debate about God and the Gospel and he's throwing all these different theories one after the other, changing tracts all the time and I said, doesn't matter what you throw at me it will, I, can, I can confound it by the Word of God and then he comes back at me oh, what, what do you mean confound? That doesn't, this is what confound means you're talking absolute nonsense we got into this argument and I just said yeah whatever and he said it mean, meant something else because he'd done a search on on the website and he got this meaning which was a different twist on on the the appropriation of the word I was using and that, so rather than uh, argue I just did yeah I said oh whatever but in the dictionary it's to surprise or confuse someone prove a theory or expectation wrong uh, defeat a plan, aim or hope, uh, or it means to pour together and mix up so it's unrecognisable. And I'll show you that it's a bit more of the definition in in the uh, in the Webster's. So confound. And I was using the biblical definition now. I didn't really look up the word, I just knew by the context of the word of God what confound meant. It meant that God would uh, confuse and prove wrong those he would confound, or those that had been confounded. So um, you could go onto a website and get a completely and use that as your dictionary search and you you'll get a whatever it whatever dictionary it's using because there's very variations of different versions of dictionary some are more concise than others and you'll get a different version so it can confuse people and arguments can come from it uh, misinformation um, com confound air to pour together um, to pour is one 
to mingle and blend so as to uh, indistinguish until it's indistinct to be indistinguishable to throw into confusion or disorder confounded very great uh, confounded so it's either to um, <coughs> to prove wrong <coughs> or to make uh, it something indistinguishable uh, to throw into confusion or disorder uh, confounded, confused, very great, enormous so there's different meanings depending on which uh, dictionary if you look at, uh, I looked at confuse um, Put to silence, to disprove, to refute. Um, so there's um, various different um, meanings to depending on which dictionary you, you're using. Uh, some words have been added, like paranoia. That's not in any of the old dictionaries. Um, I wanted to show you another word which is been known about and the meaning and the cause is dissociate. Dissociative, dissociate. Just to show that it was known in, in the 1700s. Which basically means to separate and cause disharmony. Um, so trauma based disassociation, tra trauma induced disassociate. So, dissociation was known about in um, the practice was known throughout history World War II and various um, occultic practices knew about trauma con conditioning a child so it breaks it and it comp compartmentalizes its memory of the trauma and resurfaces in a in a coping in a, a heightened state of um, fight or flight response so it's living in a nervous condition but its trauma is locked away and the more times it's trauma the more compartments you can create and that's how they learn how to program people so you can di condition them you condition the person you program the person by trauma and so it was not it was like uh, the, what the frontal lobe's done it's only just medically got into the general body of the understanding of the frontal lobe and how the brain works but this knowledge has always been known about but just con concealed from the, uh, the general medical pra practicing bodies to conceal this, uh, this abuse so depending who gets into power who gets, to, who gets publishing rights um, Things can be changed, things can be adjusted, and so that will uh, keep the future generation blinkered of what the actual true meaning of a definition is. So I wanted to just include those thoughts and those few scrappy examples of subtle changes, just very subtle changes, and depending on which dictionary you use, so how these uh, people can buy up a company and keep the name so people think oh that's still a trustworthy company it associates it with the original principles of the the founders but it's been taken over by corrupt people and then they ch they change the name or the ingredients so you have to look out for these things and uh, the word paranoia well, let's look that up in the Oxford Dictionary it's not in the Webster's but it's a modern, it's a modern uh, word, and it's a um, a bit of a dichotomy because it it dismisses uh, the actual reality of what can cause paranoia, which could be malicious, uh, covert activity. So if you label it paranoia, like uh, if you um, 
you're labelled a homophobe or a racist or an Islamophobe, it, it's to conceal a more sinister agenda. Um, and I think that that's what the word paranoia was um, added to the modern dictionaries to give um, a meaning to a word to legitimise uh, what it what the definition is, which which uh, refutes any uh, nefarious activity, any machination. It completely um, eradicates the possibility that somebody could be being followed or could be being uh, persecuted. So they, 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 they've given it a, a, a little guardian. Oh, you see, you're paranoid. And then you look up the word. And um, relating to or suffering from paranoia, unreasonable or obsessively anxious, suspicious or mistrustful, he was paranoid about being overcharged. So there's no, uh, it doesn't leave any room for argument. Paranoia. Mental condition, so you're mental, if, you've got, if you're paranoid or you're accused of paranoia, you're immediately mental, therefore that discredits your character. Mental condition characterised by delusions, so you're deluded if you suspect you're being followed or, or people are out to get you. Um, which may may be the case, it may not, but it, there's no room for argument in the definition. Um, a mental condition characterised by delusions of persecution, so if you really are being persecuted, it's easy to label you paranoia. You're paranoid. Unfounded jealousy or exaggerated self-importance, so it, it ties it into your um, ego and your narcissistic... Um, leanings, unjustified suspicion and mistrust of other people. Uh, so you, you can be labelled paranoid, even though you may not be able to prove you're being persecuted covertly. The word can be misused, paranoid, paranoia, which will associate you being delusional and mental. So it's um, important to look out at changes in uh, the Bible which is the most important change, and the people behind it, and the people who can buy up publishing rights, who can buy up the original, uh, all the original work that's done in one, one coup. They can cause a company to co become bankrupt, create the conditions where they fall, and then be on the sidelines to uh, buy up the rights, and then they can start making changes. If you notice, Google's got getting all the rights to um, archive libraries and uh, get the publishing rights on them, the copyright rights on them. So in time, you can get rid of all the books and then just slowly start deleting out of the people who own, own the copyright, deleting the knowledge out of the existence. So it controls, it subtly, incrementally controls uh, the past and removes and eradicates the truth and portrays the new the new truth which is exactly the same machinations behind the holy word of god to undermine it to bring out all different versions to corrupt the meaning to uh, water down to uh, remove the person from the power from the authority of the final authority of the word of God so you're going to get debate you're going to get confusion which is of the devil and you're going to get a separation from the truth and it's going to divide and it's and all the machination is to divide and conquer to create confusion and when you investigate this you'll see that that is the in fact the case that these um, machinations these crafts have been deliberately and purposely implemented to undermine the authority of the word of God. So if you're, if you're um, holding to any other version than the King James, I, I, I would just invite you to examine and, and trust the Lord to get a faithful testimony that it, is, it has his approval and it has lawful approval. And I think people lose sight of that and then they will lose... Uh, the Lord can't honour somebody who's holding to a corrupt version so they will 
be less powerful they would lose the grace of the Lord in their exegesis interpretation of the scripture and their testimony in life and it will have an effect on that person it, it would be like a parent saying uh, don't associate with these people because they're criminals and they will tarnish your reputation and that will destroy your future so if you uh, hang around with these people uh, you will um, be looked upon as one of them and you would it would indeed undermine your your credibility and people wouldn't trust you and it's like um, the same with the word of God and all the ecumenical interfaith systems if you're associated with one of these people and and their Bibles what you need need to realize is that then the people who um, run these bodies aren't in fact Christians they're paedophiles they're Satanists and they're in bed with all these uh, criminal corporate bodies all these occult bodies all these fake churches all witches all uh, wizards and uh, diviners and all sorts of uh, dross you know all the bottom of the barrel and no matter what Christy, Christian face you put on it having any association to this will affect the the person's testimony in their life and they will be powerless and they will be uh, compromised and yoked and guilty of taking part of those sins so if you're if you're holding to something you're directly or indirectly giving it your support you're you're giving it your okay you are certifying it you are saying that stating as a living statement that it's, it's okay it's not corrupt so if you're holding something that is corrupt you're supporting it and a and um an ambassador for the error rather than an ambassador for the truth and the faithful word of god so i'm going to leave those thoughts and and uh close and uh invite people to examine these things for themselves and if you if you're not if you're an unbeliever i would just uh clarify what the word of god says to repent to to believe in jesus christ in his death burial and resurrection and to trust in him with all your heart and believe and he will he's faithful to promise to save you and and you would be born again and receive his holy spirit you will receive his love and grace in your heart which you could not obtain for yourself because we're all sinners and we're all unrighteous and, and the only righteous person is God the only good person truly holy is the Lord Jesus Christ and God God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit and to uh, we've been created for eternity and if you die in your sin you'll be shut out from his presence forever and the only way into heaven, into that kingdom, that future promise, which is eternal. So it doesn't matter what unjust life you've got or whether you think God's unfair. God's created a purpose that we can all know and have a eternal life. It's a free gift. And that free gift only came by way of the word of God who became flesh. That was Jesus Christ. And he died and took upon all sin, suffered all sin and suffered our death for us on the cross died went into the grave went into the ground come up the third day and re-entered into heaven to make a way for us to have a a, a portion have a, an inheritance in his kingdom which is a heavenly kingdom which is righteous which is fair and just and holy but we can't enter in by being corrupted so jesus had to die for us so we could receive his righteousness his holiness by grace through faith alone, in his merit alone, his grace alone. And I'll close there and invite people in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.